Last night, in a foolish attempt to infiltrate a boys club, I violated the government employee ethics code of the state of Indiana. I have always tried to live my life in an ethical way, and last night I failed. I realize I have let down every female public official in America, and I would like to apologize to them right now, individually and in alphabetical order. Michelle Bachman, Republican, Minnesota, I'm sorry. Leslie, nope, Tammy one of the Bachman, most hilariously ethical Democrat, characters of all Wisconsin. time. If you're a fan of Parks and Rec, so The Office, today. Brooklyn Nine-Nine, or The Good Place, you're Bean. a fan of Michael Schur. He's one of the funniest writers and producers in TV. He wrote a new book, and it's called How to Be Perfect, The Correct Answer to Every Moral Question. And Michael joins us live. Mike, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. So most people would think, oh, a comedy writer, I want him to be my moral compass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How did that happen? Yeah. Not the first thing you think of, yeah. Um, I just got interested in the subject about 20 years ago or so, and I worked on the show The Good Place, which... Um, you know, obviously, if you've seen it, it was specifically about how to be a better person right. and how to make better choices. And then at the end of that show, I really just liked the subject. I wanted to keep writing about it. So I tried to collect all of the stuff I had learned into one book that would be funny and, and uh, casually written so that people could enjoy it instead of, you know, a lot of the philosophy I read is pretty boring. So I wanted it to be not boring. That was yeah. my goal. You wouldn't think behaving well would be that hard. What is the biggest disconnect you think people have? I, I actually think it is incredibly hard. I mean, the world we live in is extremely complicated. Everything we buy, everywhere we go, there's all these things that are happening that we don't even know about. You know, you buy a, you buy a sandwich from a sandwich place and the meat was raised in an, in a cruel way and it was uh, shipped really far and then the carbon footprint is really high like you're making all these choices all the time right. and you don't actually know what's going into them huh. so it, it can be very discouraging you can you know do something you think is good and then someone points out that it's actually terrible and it's very discouraging so i think the goal is just like just try to do your best, do a little better today than you did yesterday. That's really the only thing you can do. So I think all of us maybe had a philosophy class in college or something like that, but I mean, it's like all of these things kind of blend together. Is there, did you manage to boil down some of the things you learned from these philosophers and give me like a nugget that you can take from some of these guys? Well, I hope I did. That was the, that was the goal. So if I didn't, then I blew it. Um, I mean, you know, Aristotle is someone that I really kind of connect with because his whole thing is like, look, there's a certain... There's certain qualities we're all trying to have, like kindness and generosity and things like that. And you're trying to have them like in the exact right amount. And the only way you can achieve that is just by practicing them every day and kind of checking in with yourself. Like, did I get too angry there? Was I not angry enough? Like, you know, you're just kind of like just generally zeroing in over the whole course of your entire life at trying to find these exact right middle qualities that um, that he wants us to have. I find that to be a very human and very kind way of thinking about being a good person because it's it's like it's basically just trial and error which i think is the way the only way we can really do it there was one concept that that jumped out at me and it's it's that people seem to want credit when they've done something good why did that jump out to you and is there something wrong with that <laughs> Well, I don't, I think it's very understandable. I noticed it in myself. I would go to Starbucks and I would buy a coffee and then I would like, you know, throw the change in the tip jar, but I didn't do it until the barista had to turn back around <laughs> to like yeah. see me do it, you know? Yeah. 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 Right. And I was just like, why do I care? This is like 30 cents. Like, what is the deal? And I think it's a very, very human thing that we want to be thought of as good people. We want to think that we're doing good things. We want other people to see us as good people. So I completely understand it because I exhibit it all the time. Uh, and I think there's a, there's a chapter in the book about it and just trying to say like, you know, do the, do the good thing for the sake of doing the good thing, not so that other people pat you on the back. But it's very hard to avoid that feeling, I find. You're writing on shows with some of these iconic characters, aside from Leslie Nope, you have The Office, you have a lot of these, and I'm, I'm finding like someone like Michael Scott in The Office, who's so bizarre, and he can be so <laughs> off-putting to a lot of people. I find all of these characters that you're writing, though, really do have a good moral compass at heart. Is that where some of that comes from? Yeah, like Michael Scott was a buffoon, but um, but he really wanted to be loved. He wanted other people to think he was funny and to think he was a good boss and all that sort of stuff. So I, I really do believe that's true of most people. I think most people want to be good and 
and want to feel like they're contributing in a positive way to their friendships and their marriages and relationships and and to their kids and so I think, I mean, I didn't create that character, you know, Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant basically created that character and then Greg Daniels is the one who adapted it, but it was my first job. And I think I identified with the parts of Michael Scott where yes, he's a dork and he's an idiot and he makes terrible jokes, but he really, he really has a good soul. He really wants to be a good person. I feel like I locked into that. I think there's a debate in this world about whether morality and ethics are objective or, or subjective. Do you address mm -hmm. that? Because if it's subjective, then it makes it even harder because it, what, what might be considered bad to, in one culture may be fine in another culture. Do you ad address that? Yeah, I mean, there are certainly philosophers who are like, it's objective. There's rules. You got to follow the rules. If you do, you're a good person. If you don't, you fail. There are other people who think like, well, you know, look, it's all relative and this this group of people might think one thing and another group might think another thing and that's okay. And to me, the real question is like, are you going to try one way or the other, whatever your belief is about what goes into being a good person? Are you going to like actively try to follow those rules or to engage with that idea? That's what's really important. It's the trying. It's the doing is like up for debate, right? Like different people yeah. can see different things as good or bad. It's it's really the trying that's important to me. Well, the book is called How to Be Perfect. You can follow Michael on Twitter at what is that? Oh, at Ken, Ken Tremendous. Tremendous. <laughs> oh, I am changing my on-air name tomorrow. Wow, you're really setting the bar high there, buddy. That's right. Yeah, that's it. That's a, that's been my internet name for a long time. I don't know why. I love it. That's All right, great. thanks, Michael. Thank you. <laughs>